If you're an electronic music fan, chances are you've heard of and seen this album before. Alongside their now classic albums, Daft Punk put out two live albums, Alive 1997 and Alive 2007, both of which were like a collection of their discography up to that point, with mashups of many of their songs, with new live elements thrown in the mix. Both albums are classics and some of the most well-known live albums in electronic music history, but you already knew that I'm sure. What you might not know is the show Daft Punk made in 2007 that this album originates from, or more specifically, the gear they used to play these songs live. That's what I will be talking about today. In more recent years, good recordings of Daft Punk's Alive 2007 show have been getting upscaled and remastered by fans as the technology for upscaling has significantly improved, especially with the advancements in AI. The show can now be watched in glorious upscaled 1080p showcasing the iconic pyramid, the hexagonally gridded lights and the massive crowds, which I'm sure many of us are very jealous we weren't in those crowds in 2006 and 2007. The one thing these recordings don't show however is the inside of the pyramid. That's what I will be looking at today. Some of you may recognise this image which is probably the clearest image of the setup with short descriptions of what each part of the setup does. While the titles may be wrong and don't match the equipment, the descriptions under them are correct. In this image we can see that they use a couple supercomputers running Ableton Live 6, which they controlled using the Behringer BCR2000 MIDI controllers either side of them. Presumably they each had a screen that they could control, but both were running the same Ableton project side by side. Using these controllers, they were able to control effects such as EQ, filtering and distortion, as well as transpose the songs to a different pitch and trigger loops and samples. Alongside controlling Ableton, the duo each had a rack mount pair of Mini Moog Voyager synthesizers. These things have been discontinued, and you'll be lucky to find one secondhand for less than three to four thousand US dollars, and Daft Punk had four of them. Presumably the Mini Moogs had presets of some of their synth sounds that they could play and manipulate live. This here is a video of one of the synths crashing mid-show during the too long X Steam Machine part of the show, proving that they do in fact use these during the show, in case you were skeptical. Now with all this said, I want to clear up something that has been a misconception for a long time now for the fans who have explored Daft Punk's live shows. Daft Punk does not use Jazz Mutant lemurs in this show. The two screens in the middle have often been incorrectly identified as a couple of custom lemurs from Jazz Mutant. Now, from closer inspection, these don't look anything like the Lima, but you could say that these are either custom-made or prototypes of the Lima. But then we have to ask, why would they be running Ableton on a Lima? And how and why would they be controlling a pair of touchscreen Lemas with two separate MIDI controllers? We know that the Lemas are able to control Ableton, but I don't believe that they could run Ableton themselves on their own hardware, especially with the power required for a show like this back in 06 and 07. As Tomas mentions in this image, they used a pair of quote, custom-made supercomputers. It's also very likely that these here are custom-made monitors built for the show purely to run Ableton, and that are powered by a computer down below in this box. These power cables are likely to be the cables to power each computer. While they didn't use the lemurs in the Alive show, Daft Punk did use four lemurs in their 2008 Grammys performance with Kanye West. However, the way they played Stronger in that performance is very different to the way they performed songs during their Live show. The Jazz Mutant Lima was basically an iPad MIDI controller before the iPad really became a thing. The Lima was one of, if not the first touchscreen MIDI devices, which you could pretty much customise to your liking basically using widgets. The actual interface itself felt like something out of Tron Legacy, which was very much on brand for Daft Punk as they made the soundtrack. Another person who used the Lima in his live shows back in the late 2000s was Deadmau5, who obviously missed having that customizable interface so much after it was discontinued that he had a whole program built for his shows called OSC Pilot, which he released to the public a few years ago, link in the description. 
The visuals for the show were done by XL Video, who powered the visuals with 8 Mac Pros running Catalyst V4 and Final Cut Pro. Daft Punk were also apparently linked directly to the visuals with their setup, but it's unknown if the two were able to control the lights and visuals themselves, or if it was just all done by the video engineers. It's very likely that the lights and visuals are synced with the Ableton project, but it's unknown how it's done specifically. Regardless, with the technology available at the time, what they achieved with this show is really impressive and would still be spectacular even today. Lastly, let's talk about the pyramid stage design itself. I don't think there could have been a more perfect stage for Daft Punk to perform in. It has that futuristic, technologic feel while being mysterious, like the robots themselves. The pyramid actually also opened up for their reveal at the Kanye West Grammys performance in very Daft Punk fashion, although that was a smaller version of the pyramid that they use in the Alive show. Unlike most stage designs like this, which usually get either disassembled, reused for other shows, or melted down to be made into something else, the Alive tour pyramid has remained in storage this whole time. And if I'm honest, should be put in a museum for its significance in electronic music culture. The reason we know this is from this shipping manifesto that was found, but I'm not sure how some people found and got access to this. We also have Reddit threads written by somebody who visited the storage facility that a lot of the gear is stored at in Los Angeles. Thank you for watching. If any of you saw Daft Punk's Alive show in 2007, or even 1997, please let me know. I'd love to hear about what your experiences were in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, ding the bell, etc. I'll see you all next time.